Hi, welcome back to Stock Talk. This is Joe Rabel with Rabel Stock Research. So if anyone has watched any of these videos on Stock Talk or uh, seen my YouTube channel or read my book or basically heard anything that I've done online uh, for more than five minutes, you know that I spend a significant amount of my time talking about multiple time frames. Um, I wanted to give a little bit different look today, and one of the things that happened was I, I didn't get a lot of requests that came through this week, and I was sort of waiting for that to take place. I figured at some point that might happen, and what I wanted to do today uh, is go through all the stocks in the Dow Jones one by one uh, and analyze them. And uh, I'm going to start out in the lesson part. I want to explain the multiple time frames and show you how um, I think it's good to look at things in multiple time frames when you're looking at a list. If you have a list of stocks that you're interested in or a list of stocks that might be a, like a review list um, and sort them by the sector and then go through and look at the, uh, uh, the trends. So uh, let's go ahead and get into the agenda. Um, what I want to do again is look at a bottom up evaluation of the Dow Jones Industrial Average, looking at each component and uh, sorting it by industry so we can get a, a sense of that, uh, but also look at where the trends are deteriorating and what time frames. So uh, we're going to go through that and then I am going to analyze uh, the requests. Uh, there were a few requests that came through, but then I want to do um, sort of a rapid fire, go through all the stocks in the Dow Jones and give a quick update on any all of those stocks. So I think this could be fun. So again, I've got the list, the Dow 30 list here, and um, I've got it sorted by its sector. And then uh, what I wanted to point out is I've got three different trend evaluations taking place in this report. So I've got the daily here, which is showing the short-term trend. And these two columns are the weekly, showing the intermediate-term trend. And then these two columns are the monthly, showing uh, the long-term trend. Now, if there's not a mark, a check mark in either one, we know the trend is neutral. Uh, obviously, green in the positive side would mean we have a positive trend for that time frame, and red would be negative. So if we look at this, notice what's taking place. Um, what's, what's interesting is over the course of the last year on the short term trends, we have definitely seen this take place a number of times where uh, a lot of trends went from positive to neutral and negative on a short term basis. Um, but what we haven't seen take place over the course of the last year is to see this many red marks in the intermediate term uh, weekly trends. And what that's telling me is that this pullback has inflicted more damage than what we've seen in quite some time. Uh, so when I, when I look at it this way, I can see that this pullback is likely not gonna be the type of thing where we pull back real quick and then we go straight to new highs, which is pretty much what we've been seeing over the course of the last year. I think this is gonna be a little bit different. The good news at this point is that the majority of the long-term trends are still bullish. So um, while the short and intermediate term trends are showing some signs of damage being done, we're not seeing that happen on a long-term basis at this point. The only two negative trends we have are in um, VZ, uh, Verizon, which has been negative for quite some time, and Intel, which has stuck out like a sore thumb if you go through and look at all the charts in the uh, semiconductor area. Um, so we've got those two bearish trends. If we want to look at the stocks that are really kind of all green and showing, you know, short, intermediate term and long term, we still have Coke in that position. We still have uh, we have CVX in that position. This is going to be very this is a, a week away from turning this to green. Um, we still have travelers in that position and we have UNH in that position, but we only have four. We're all four, all, all three of the time frames and trends are bullish. So we've got that uh, telling us one thing. And then the other thing that I think is interesting uh, and that's a little bothersome is these red marks here representing what's going on in the industrial area because 
while Boeing has been in a downtrend, uh, this is a new break. These three are new breaks in the industrial area. So the industrials, and one thing I've noticed in my bottom of reviews is I don't like the action that's taking place in these industrials. There's definitely been some damage taking place. So it's really, I think, a great way to go through and look at these different trends, and especially when you can do it when you're looking at the different sectors. Um, and the reason why I like doing this is because I have programmed this in and these trends are happening from an objective basis based on the price action relative to the 18MA uh, and the slope of the 18MA relative. Uh, and it's also the 18MA relative to the 40, um, whether it's above it or below it and whether the line is right, whether the 18 is rising or falling and where price is in relation to those. So I've essentially programmed in positive trends, negative trends, and it's not one or the other, then it's neutral. And so um, by doing that, it, it keeps me um, it keeps me straight. Like if I have some kind of a negative bias going on where I, for some reason, have decided that I think the market's going down, I can go look at this and this can give me an objective view of what's taking place. And I like to do it on the Dow 30 because it's a manageable list of 30 stocks. The report that I do for Rabel Stock Research is actually the, the big cap list. I call it the heavyweights. It's the top 30 most, uh, most biggest names in the uh, Russell 1000, which is essentially the biggest stocks in the S&P. And uh, I do this same type of review because I want to get a feel for where the damage is taking place in what sectors and what time frames. So I think this is a good way to kind of keep yourself straight and make sure you don't have some kind of a bias in place. Uh, let's go ahead and get into the stocks now. Before we get into the individual stocks, my research can be found at rabelstockresearch.com. I do about two to three reports each week, trying to identify the best looking patterns I can find. In this environment, it's very important to be bottom up and look at lots and lots of stocks, which is basically what I'm doing on a regular basis. So uh, uh, please feel free to give that a try uh, or take a look. I, I do have a discount uh, as a starting point if you wanna try it on a trial basis. Uh, use this coupon code stock talk. Uh, let's go ahead and get into the individual stocks. Okay, so I'm taping this part of the show Thursday morning before the open, and I did get some late requests. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to honor those. I want to go through all the uh, requests that came through, and then I'm going to do a rapid fire, go through the Dow and pick, uh, you know, just give a quick glimpse of what I'm seeing for each stock. Um, ETD is our first stock here. Uh, the monthly charts pulled back to the 18 month. We're getting a pretty good look here off the weekly as well with low ADX and the MACD coming up and around. I think this looks pretty attractive uh, based on where it's set up, but I'd like to see this get through 26 and a half, 27, maybe show some signs of strength here, but this big reversal was pretty nice. GGB, same idea. We had a nice breakout to the upside and now we've pulled back to support, but the pullback was a little deep. So it, when I see a deep pullback like that, I like to see the weekly chart get going again. You can see how the MACD is below the zero line here, even though we've rallied some. So I think a little bit more needs to take place. I don't think this is going to get through 550 on the first try. Let it consolidate a little bit before uh, heading in there. MSB, a uh, little sloppy, a lot of violent movement uh, uh, all over the place, actually. Um, so I'd like to see this settle down. Um, it's in a range right now between 20 and 35. So uh, let it consolidate. And again, the, when you get a quiet pattern, that tends to lead to big moves. I don't usually see big moves from this wild type of movement. So uh, PLAT. Um, obviously, uh, looking at uh, the uh, continuous contract here. So um, another uh, really nice move to the upside on the monthly, you can see, but look at how it retraced the entire uh, move to the upside and, and actually re-entered the breakout. So that causes it to lose upside momentum. And I do think 1100 is a problem. We can see we tried to break out at 1100. I have a feeling this is going to end up trading in a range, maybe between here and 1000, something like that. But we want to see a more definitive move through 1100 before getting interested in this again. A couple semiconductors here. Um, this stock is a strong stock, ACLS, but it is, getting, it is pretty extended on the monthly. Now we've pulled back on the weekly 
And um, yeah, we, we had a, a, a sort of a short term trigger here, but it didn't really have a nice um, sideways pattern before breaking out. Um, so it doesn't surprise me to see this go up and test this area and then come back down and test the low again. So um, overall, this pattern really looks pretty decent. And, and the fact of the matter is uh, relative to a lot of semis, I think this looks really it's holding up pretty well. So this is pretty close to uh, triggering. It might need to get through 75 to really get going. Uh, AOSL, very similar pattern. We had a deep retracement. And when I see a deep retracement like that, kind of like a, a vertical decline, a lot of times what you do is you rally up, you fail there the first time, and then you come back down and test. Uh, but again, overall pattern looks pretty good. My, my only thing about these two semis is that this is not early, okay? You have to trade these. Um, I would be looking for a move back up through uh, the high of the last couple days. So maybe uh, as a trigger, you might need to go down to an hourly for that. Uh, but possibly look for a move through 60 to really confirm that this is getting going again. DHIL, uh, strong move off the low. And then we ran into the resistance from the long term uh, pattern here dating back to 2016 and 2017 and uh, it definitely got hit a little bit but we found support at the 18 month line and notice how this is rallying off um, price support here but also we're getting a, a reversal at the zero line in MACD and the ADX is showing the sellers are not that strong so I'd be looking for a pullback in this now this has made a pretty big move in a short period of time you got to watch the daily for a little bit of a pullback back towards support maybe 190 195 if it's if it's sideways it might end up being closer to 200. CLNE. Um, <clears throat> so big move to the upside, but look at how this retraced too much and it overran the 18 month line. So when I see that now, I know I'm kind of in a downtrend on the month on the weekly chart and I need a full fledged reversal, which means not only break the trend line, but come back and test this area. Don't just buy a breakout in this pattern because you'll end up getting chopped around as it goes sideways. Um, I think, uh, you know, unless you want to trade it short term and maybe just make a move up towards eight and a half or nine. CLF, uh, I, I really like what's going on here. The steel stocks are trading really well. The problem we've got in the short term is we need a pullback and we want to watch the quality of the pullback. If the pullback is on light volume or very orderly, then I think you can play this pullback. You could look at stocks like SDLD and uh, US Steel. They all have the similar qualities in place. Um, but we're, I would be looking for a short term and it might push up to 25 before it pulls back, but I'd still wait for that. CCJ, I like the looks of this one as well. Look at the zero line reversal on the weekly after we had a really strong move and pull back towards the 18 month with strong ADX here. Um, so now I'm looking for a, uh, this 18 on the weekly to kind of cup around and maybe get a little pullback or pause on the daily chart for the next entry point. Okay, let's get into the Dow stocks. Uh, Apple's still in a strong trend. It, if it breaks this 18, which is getting close to doing, then you have to sort of assume we're going to work our way back down to the 18 month. But this is one of the stronger stocks in the Dow. Um, sideways pattern in Amgen. I don't really see anything going on here. I think it's more of a trading range, but it does have really good underlying support. I just don't see anything dynamic taking place right now. American Express, I mean, actually has held up pretty well. We got a zero line reversal, but notice how when we broke out, the ADX couldn't get above 25. Um, and that's the second time that's happened in this move. I think there's just not a lot of strength in this trend. And I would not be surprised after this big down day if this just spends a lot of time wallowing sideways. Boeing needs to take out this downtrend line and get through the 40 week. Remember the 40 weeks of 200 day and it keeps bouncing its head on this and failing, but it keeps making lower highs as well. So we're looking for a reversal there. Caterpillar got hit really hard. Now, I know yesterday was a good day for this stock, but I, I, you know, I don't like the fact that this 18 and 40 have rolled over on top like this. And I would think, yeah, we could get a short term rally, but probably as we cross over into 200, um, this is going to struggle a little bit. CRM came down to a major support at 200. OK, this had a big drop in sympathy with what's going on in software, which got crushed. So when you look at this, it looks awful. But if you look at it relative to its uh, to its peers, uh, yeah, it had a down move, but I don't think it was anywhere near as bad. Um, we're down towards this 200 area now. It'll probably bounce. Expect some resistance as we meet up with the weekly moving averages. 
Cisco is still okay from a longer term standpoint, but I don't like this reversal. We had a big up bar and then a big down bar on the monthly. So there is resistance now at 60, which is the midpoint of those two bars. Um, so expect more sideways action, pretty good support in the low 50s. So probably a trading range between 50 and 60 right now. CVX is in a strong trend, but look, we've made a big run to the upside and look at the biggest bar in the move is this week. So this is a good spot to probably take some profits after a big run, getting a little climatic, maybe either in early next week, something like that. Um, expect some kind of a consolidation to start in this one. <clears throat> Disney had just too deep of a retracement, overran the 18 month line, overran support. And uh, now I, I think there's pretty decent um, chance that this isn't going to drop anymore. It's going to be more of a sideways pattern right now. But I mean, at the same time, it's not a stock that's going to do anything exciting. I would just uh, avoid this for now. I don't, I, I don't see anything uh, attractive about it. Dow Chemical. So uh, one of the things I noticed in the Dow is there's not a lot of basic materials in here. And there's some pretty good action in basic materials, steels, aluminums, even gold starting to show some signs of life, um, and certainly agricultural chemicals. This looks okay, but I want to see it get back up through this peak up here, 62, 62 and a half. Goldman Sachs is at a really key level right now. This 325 is sitting on the 18 month line. Any further deterioration, and we have to assume that the long-term trend is in jeopardy. If it can turn here and get back up through the weekly lines, then we have to think we're ready for another up leg. So this is at a critical point. We just gotta watch and see how it reacts. Uh, Home Depot, violent decline to the 18 month. Yes, this is the price area where I would be watching, but I don't like the way it's approaching it. Look at the violence of the selling. You can see it in the ADX on the daily chart. No rush on here. When I see a drop like this, expect sideways action first if it's gonna survive. 300 is a big level. HON has broken the 18 month as well, but coming into support. So probably starts to form a range, but I think there's a lot of deterioration here and expect resistance at the weekly moving averages. IBM just can't get out of its own way. Just cannot seem to start a trend to the upside. It's been a perpetual sideways pattern. Uh, just nothing exciting here. Intel has wasted a great move in the semiconductors. It just hasn't been able to participate. Now there's a lot of support underneath, so I'm not expecting it to go down. But when you look at it relative to, the, to its peers, it's just been a very, very poor stock. Johnson & Johnson is trying to hang on here. We can see it's sitting at this 160 area um, is the 18 month line, but we've lost a little bit of momentum. You can see the ADX just hasn't participated in the last few years on the monthly chart. Um, and then we're starting to deteriorate a little bit on the weekly in terms of momentum characteristics. So if it breaks 18, I think this turns into a pretty big waste of time. I mean, it's got pretty good support at 150. JP Morgan continues to be uh, under pressure here. And we've broken the 18 month, which is a little surprising to me based on the way the, AD, uh, the ADX look going into it. But enough deterioration to bother me with this stock. It doesn't mean it can't rally, but I think the rally is going to be met with more selling up around uh, 145, 150. Coca-Cola has been a bright spot in the Dow. It came out of an inside year I've talked about. Look at the relative strength line in this stock. It's a slow, steady performer, and that's not a bad stock in a year like this, at least the way the year has gone so far. Overall pattern looks pretty good. Uh, I could see this continuing to climb, certainly up in the upper 60s, and then we'll just have to see, but no signs of climax or anything. Uh, McDonald's is due to pull back to the 18 month and we're crossing down here. I don't see a, a signal or anything like that at this point. We're going to have to see how it reacts down there. See if we get a zero line reversal. The momentum really isn't that bad. It just is a little sloppy in the way that's played out. Uh, but expect, uh, expect the 18 month to hold. A lot of damage done to the 3M. Okay. I mean, this is, uh, this is a very, this is a broken pattern. Um, while we're coming into support, it's not a stock unless I'm just going to trade it for a short term bounce. It's not something I'd be all that interested in. Merck, it continues to struggle to do anything meaningful. It failed to, on its breakout and then it failed on its reattempt. And now I think there's a lot of support in the low 70s, but there's nothing exciting happening in this stock. So Microsoft has come down and tested the 18 month line. Now, normally when this happens, we go sideways for a period. We don't just go down and up. We'll go down and then go sideways for four to six weeks. That's not something I'd be looking for in Microsoft. 
Um, Nike, again, overrun in the 18-month line. Look at the MACD rolling over on the monthly. This is going to be hard-pressed to do anything too meaningful back to the upside. So expect resistance at the, at the weekly moving averages based on what's taking place here. We should get a bounce off the support area. Um, it, do, it shouldn't just keep dropping, but at the same time, there's been some damage, so be careful there. Um, Procter and Gamble. I like the overall pattern, um, but we are we are jeopardizing the um, the eighteen week line. And if we do that, then we probably should assume that we're going to test the eighteen month. The momentum characteristics in this chart look good, so I'm not all that concerned. I think anything as long as this can hold one forty five, one fifty area, I think this is in pretty good shape. So another stock that I think looks attractive in the uh, Dow Jones. Look at the look at this sideways consolidation you can see on both the monthly and the weekly chart. And despite the fact that the financials have struggled a little bit, uh, this stock has been, has done pretty well. It hasn't really shown any sign of selling, and we're definitely seeing insurance acting pretty well at, in the financial area. UNH is another stock that's been in an uptrend. If we break the 18 week, legitimately break it and we start to see that roll over, then you should expect a test of the 18 month. But the momentum characteristics are all right. Now, I don't like the fact that the ADX dropped below 25 for the first time in over a year. So it's very possible we could start consolidating in this one. Visa continues to be a stock that's in a vulnerable position. It's not been a good relative performer over the last year or two, but it hasn't convincingly broke down either. So if we get back down below 200, I think this is a lot more vulnerable to an 18 month that actually rolls over. An 18 month rolling over is, is a devastating blow to a stock that's been in an uptrend for a long time. Um, so Verizon is a stock that's really been a waste of time for uh, several years, but it also has a significant amount of support at 50. And I think it's more of a trading range. It looks like it wants to work its way up to the upper end of the range, up around 57, 58. WB is uh, trying to turn around, but it can't get going. It's, uh, it needs to hold this 18 month to keep that intact. Um, very key support here around 45. I want to see this push through 50 with a vengeance and see some improving uh, a green DI as well. Um, but uh, overall, I, I'm, I'm watching this because of the way this is turning around. Walmart's having some problems here. Um, I don't really understand why this can't hold the 18 month, but it isn't holding it. Um, and now look, notice how the ADX is dropping down under 25 on the uh, monthly chart. So this could send, spend a long time consolidating. Support's down under 130. Uh, so just be aware of that. Okay, well, we've run out of time. Thanks for joining me. Uh, please send those stock requests to stocktalk at stockcharts.com. Uh, have a great week and we'll see you next time. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.